Hey guys, good morning, good morning, good morning. I just woke up about an hour ago or so. <clears throat> this is Sandra Ayan, your home care provider. I was trying to get my computer so that I can go on live, but for some reason or other, I can't log on on live. And I really don't have time to deal with it right now, so. I said, let me just do what I can with what I got, right? So. Every morning when I wake up, I um, go outside, I make myself a cup of coffee, and then I get my dog, because she has to use the restroom. And I sit there and I stare at my yard, which hasn't been mowed in about three weeks now. And I, um, I kind of sit and reflect. <clears throat> So what I did is I started thinking about how tired I am <laughs> and I started reflecting on what I've done and I thought about the days that I supposedly had off, which I didn't really because I was running around trying to get my, my, my vehicles in order and then I went and I got my nails done. So that's like super awesome. The girls did a great job at the nail salon. I don't know if you guys can see this. Look at how beautiful this looks. And they did them in TJ. They, they look they look really, really good. And as I mentioned before, that <clears throat> this is one of the things that I do um, for myself. So my nails, my massage. I haven't had a massage because I haven't had a chance. But that's one of the things that I do for myself. And I try to pamper myself a little bit at least so that I can um, feel a little bit better about what I'm doing. <clears throat> but I was sitting there and I was thinking, I started calculating how many hours, more or less, because I don't write the hours down. Normally I do, but because I've been extremely busy. I haven't really written them down, so I was sitting there calculating how many hours I worked, and I realized from the time that I get up to and get there to the time that I leave, seven days a week, <clears throat> it's anywhere between 14 to 16 hours a day. And that's with the combination of everybody. And I thought it was pretty, it's a lot of work, you guys. I've done it before, but I think it's because I'm older. But I wanted to share this with you guys, and then I'll share with you guys the um, evaluation process that um, people go through. People have to go through when you get evaluated. My son gave me this for... Mother's Day. <clears throat> but I don't think it's more for... Um, I think this kind of suits just everybody that helps, okay? So it says... He cut the card out and put it on the box, which I thought was really original. It says, I am forever grateful for you. And then it's a big mom. It says, You held my hand through all my life, found patience and understanding when I made the wrong choices praised me in all my moments of success and taught me how to give to others from the heart it says you protected me when i was afraid sheltered me from danger allowed me to grow and create dreams and encouraged me to bring those dreams to life you never gave up on me never walked away from me, and never let me live one day of my life without feeling special. Thank you for loving me so much and for giving me the best of you. I will never live a day of my life without being grateful. And then it says, I love you, Mom. And this lady is Deborah Haints Cavatio. The reason I wanted to share this with you guys is because... <clears throat> it's not what was in the box. It's what 
it says. And it's not because it's Mother's Day. It's because this morning when I sat there drinking my coffee. And now I'm on my second cup. Oh, that's cold. I realized that that's what we do as home care providers. We never leave them down. <clears throat> We're always there. We attend to their their needs. And they are forever grateful. Maybe not all of them are grateful the way they should be. But majority of them are. <clears throat> so being that I have been working... That many hours throughout the week. One of the things that I wanted to share with you guys, besides this note that my son did for me for Mother's Day, which applies to everybody, basically. I'm going to get rid of the bags real quick. Um, is how to advocate for a recipient. As a provider. So. What I have been doing. While I have been. Working. And I want you guys to also know. That the recipient. Needs to understand. That these phone calls are important. Because. This is how you make your money. You know. The more you can provide. The more you can, the more you can, the more you receive, the more you provide, right? So, I wanted to share with you guys what it is that the social worker is looking for. Because as I mentioned to you guys, right now it is, what is it, eight something. And... I'm trying to hurry up, but I wanted to share this with you because when I, as soon as I walk out the door, I have to hurry up and get to my client's apartment because he's sitting, he's laying in bed. He's waiting for me to say, knock, knock, open the door, knock, knock, and come in. And... As soon as I come in the door, now he knows that Sandra's here. Sandra's going to get me up. She's going to get me dressed. Today I have to give him a shower, a, a bed bath. And I told him this last night to warn him. <laughs> um, he's going to try to shave. And if he can't shave, he did last time. But if he can't shave, I'm going to shave him. But when a social worker comes to the home and does an evaluation, they want to hear the recipient say, well, Sandra gives me a shower. So what does that entail? Because this is what the social worker wants to hear. Well, Sandra either gives me a shower, it gives me a bath in bed because I can't get up and get to the shower, so she'll wipe my ear, she'll, she'll, and we always start from clean to dirty, okay? This is from Wanda Sykes. <laughs> She's awesome. We always start from clean to dirty. So <clears throat> I normally start from the face, which is the most important part. We, we do the face, we do the neck, we go down to the shoulders, down to the arms, down to the hands. We get that part done. We go down to the torso, which is your 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 front of your up until the belly button, a little lower than the belly button. We do the back. Uh, use as many of the wipes or clean the towels as um, you grab as many towels as you want. You do, and then you do the lower extremities, the legs, 
And the last part I do is the the uh, private part, you know, his private part. And sometimes because he doesn't feel comfortable enough, unless he has an accident, then I have to, I have to make sure he's clean. And because, and I know it's extremely uncomfortable, okay? I, it's not uncomfortable for me. Why? Because I have boys and I also have training in school and, and the way I look at a person is just another body and let me see what's wrong with this body and what does it need. So I go ahead and I do whatever it is that it takes for me to do to make sure that he is clean. He says, oh, you've done this before. I said, yeah, but the main reasoning behind that is I do it the way that I would want somebody to do it for me. So... It's not so much as having experience and going to school. It's actually saying, you know what? What if that was my body? How would I want my body clean? So that's what I do is I clean their body the way I would want my body to be clean. And again, I go from clean to dirty, okay? <clears throat> so when the social worker comes... She wants to know what it is that you do for them because one of the things is bathing. And that's just an example. So I would tell her exactly what it is that I'm doing. Every single detail matters because the more you tell them of the details, the more they can say, well, we need to allocate more time. Okay, well, what if you don't give them a bed bath? And what if you take them... Um, to the shower well I get him in the shower I help him get in the shower once he's in the shower he sits down if he can sit down he'll stand up if he can stand up um, if he sits down well what are you able to do what do you what else do you do for him he's in the shower he can take a shower by himself no I have to hand him the soap I have to hand him the washcloth I have to wash his hair while he's in there I'm outside the tub, okay, by the way, outside the shower, so I'm trying not to get wet. I, um, I give him, I, once I wash his hair, I have to wash his lower extremities, which is his legs, his knees, the back of his calves, in between the toes, you know, you go between the toes and make sure that it, they're, they're, they're clean, make sure there's no soap, make sure that, you know, they're washed. And then he stands up, and then I help him get out of the shower. I cover him with a towel, and then I, I have him come out of the shower. And then um, very I, I dry him up from head to toe, and then I have him um, either sit down because he's extremely weak, and I will roll him over to the bedroom covered in towel so he's not cold, and I'm also respecting his privacy, okay? So I take him into the bedroom, and then now I have to put on his, his underwears, his shorts, halfway all the way to the top before I pick him up. I have to get coconut oil and put it on the bottom of his feet because his feet are extremely dry and they have calluses. I have to put on the compression nylons and then I have to put on his socks and then I have to put his shoes on. Uh, I put on, I take off the towel, I put on his shirt and while I'm doing this, it's kind of funny, okay, because Whatever it is, the towels that I'm taking off of him, I just toss them over to the side away from obstructing my path because in a minute here, I'm going to be having him stand up. I put on his gate belt. I, um, I tell him, okay, come on, man, let's do this because he's 165 pounds and, and, and this is from swimming and this is from not swimming. <laughs> But I'm extremely strong, okay? <laughs> I used to play with my moms. She told me, one day you're going to be like me, Sandra. And I said, mm-hmm, sure. And look at me now, right? So I do this for him. And then I'm like, okay, it's time to get up. So I hold him from the gate belt, which is a belt that they put around his, his um, that I put around his weight. I take him to the... Um, I tell him, all right, come on, let's get up. He gets up. 
Sometimes he'll be able to get up out of bed by himself. Sometimes he can't. So let's say this time he worked halfway and he was able to get up. Then once he's up on his own, on his walker, um, I ask him, okay, I, I coach him, you know, flat foot because he couldn't put his foot down. Are you firm? Are you stable? He's stable. Okay, now I want you to stand tall because he's crutched over the the walker. I want you to stand tall. So he stands tall. Okay, now I'm going to put your pants up because they're below his bottom. I'm going to let go of the belt. Okay. So then I grab his pants and I, I put his, his, his shorts up, his underwear, his boxers and his shorts up. Now that process is done with, right? He has to get to the living room where he gets to the living room slowly and as he's walking i'm telling him i've noticed some things after watching how he walks he had knee surgery and his he has bad habits that he's been living for with about four years so after watching him i'm like okay i need you to when you take a step forward take a step forward and do it to the right because his knee will collapse to the left automatically. So all his strength is over to the left. Step forward to the right, plant the leg, plant the foot. And I sound like a recording and, he, and I say I'm sorry if I'm saying it too much. But I need him to be conscious of that. Forward to the right, plant the foot. Forward to the right, plant the foot. Stay between the walker. The walker is too far ahead. Pull it back to you. Baby steps. Take a step with your other foot. Try to match the length of that foot. If it doesn't, if you can go a little further with your left foot, perfect. He does a good job, and I, pra I praise him. I was like, great. That was awesome. Good job. You did a good job. Okay, step forward to the right. Plant the foot. Take another step. Match it. And, and this is probably about a 15 minute, 15 minutes, if it, if not more, for him to get from his bedroom to his couch. And then comes the process of him backing up, touch the couch with your calves so that you know that you're on the couch and you can sit down, let go of the walker, grab the arm of the couch so you know that you're safe. I have him held by the belt. I'll let him go, but I'll tell him right behind him. And then finally, you ready to sit down? Yes. Okay. Ready? I got the belt. Slowly, one hand on the armchair, one hand on the walker. And slowly, sometimes he plops. <laughs> and, I, and if he plops, I tell him that was a plop. If he does half a plop, I'll tell him that was half a plop. But if he does it correctly, I'm like, good job. That was awesome. You did great. Good for you. Once he's sitting down, and I, I tell him, scoop back so he doesn't slide down. I'm like, are you okay? And he says, yeah, okay, cool. So now I have to run to the, uh, we got to make some coffee, okay, because we need coffee. So now I ma start making coffee. He's still sitting there. I run and I make the coffee and now it's brewing. Um, once the coffee's brewing, he tells me, I, I go into the restroom. I grab another washcloth, one that I use for his face. And I'm sorry, for his hands. And... I go over there, I, I fold the washcloth in four. On one side, I put soap on it, and then I, I wash every single finger. I go through every single finger in between the palm, the top, again, every single finger, in between the palm, the palm, the back with soap. I put his hands on a towel because they're wet. I run back to the restroom. I rinse that cloth off and make it clean. Come back again. Now I'm cleaning it with a clean washcloth. His hands are wet. He has it on the on a towel. Then I give him a towel and I say, here you go. Dry your hands. I want your hands dry. Then I go and I grab lotion. I put lotion on his hands. I put lotion on his arms. And whatever's left over, I use it on myself. I put lotion down his legs. Um... Now, 
Coffee's still brewing, right? So now I go over, I, I grab another little thing, that the little round thing that you put on your neck when they give it to you at the hospital. I grab a towel, put the towel on his chest. I grab the toothbrush. I put toothpaste on the toothbrush. I grab a cup of water. I um, <clears throat> go give him the toothbrush and I hand it to him and I go, here you go. Brush your teeth up, down, sides, um, the tongue, um, brush your teeth. And I know this sounds tedious, you guys, but this is the kind of stuff you have to tell the social worker you're doing. Fine, he's done brushing his teeth. Here's the water. Drink some water. Um, he has a towel. I hand him the little container or I will hold it for him and spit out. He spits out. Um, take another sip of water, gargle, because I want to make sure all the toothpaste is out of the mouth. He spits out. Okay, great. I run back to the rest. I take the towel. I clean his mouth. I run back to the restroom. I clean my containers. Then I grab some um, Listerine. I put it in a cup, half Listerine, uh, one half of the lips is Listerine, and then half of the half is water, so it's not so strong. Give it to him. Here you go. Down the hatch. Gargle. Spit it out. There you go. Now he's ready to go, right? No, he's not. I need to do his hair. So I go and I'll either grab his hair with, with soap while he's sitting down on the couch with a towel behind him and a towel in front of him. And I'll brush and I'll brush uh, his, his, I'll, I'll do his hair, you know, like if I was doing, uh, doing my own hair and, um, I do that. And then I get another towel, and then that towel is wet. So now I've taken off the soap off the hair. Once the soap is off the hair, I know the hair is clean. Now I take the towel and I dry his hair, run back to the restroom, go get a, a, a comb, comb his hair, and he looks a mil like a million dollars. Super, super awesome. Now I hate drinking coffee in the morning. When I brush my teeth, but whatever, we have to do it like that, you know. So finally, I hand him his coffee. What would you like for breakfast? Oh, I want this. So I prepare him his breakfast. While he's drinking his coffee, I go grab all his medicines. You need this, this, and this, and this, and this. I get a shot glass. I put it in the shot glass. Here you go, man. Take a shot. Drinks his pills. Okay, now he's good with that. Pills are other way. And then I give him his coffee, I give him his, his 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 lunch, and he says, are you hungry? Yeah, no, I don't know, it depends. Now he's having breakfast. Now he's done. He's done with his breakfast. I put his dish, dirty dishes back where they belong. In the meantime, while he's having breakfast, I already went into the bedroom, I already cleaned the bedroom, already straightened up, because remember I threw everything everywhere um, that I didn't need, dirty clothes or clean clothes, whatever, it just goes where it belongs. I run back, back, and I also clean the restroom. He's almost done with his breakfast. I clean up the mess that I had made, which they give you time to clean up after you clean, after you give, provide meals, okay? Now he's done with his breakfast. I take his plates away. He's good to go. I ask him, how is your pain level? He tells me, here you are. Now, I kind of get to breathe a little bit, Okay. His hygiene's done. He's been dressed. He took a shower. He had breakfast. He had his pills. And now I can sit there and tell him, okay, what's up, man? What are we doing today? Well, today I want to do the computer and I want to sit there and do my paperwork. Okay, cool. I want you to sit for a minute. I elevate. I bring, you know, I have a chair. I have to elevate that leg. Um, I elevate. The, I take off his shoe because it's more comfortable. I elevate the, both legs, okay? Okay. I wrap a towel in a circle because his knee collapses inward. I put it in between the legs so that his, his, um, before I put the towel in, I have to, I have to do a therapy that the ter therapist taught me where I push one, one leg outward and then I pull with the other leg. So I'm like this pulling opening up his legs because his legs automatically collapse. So I do that for about. I'm on my, I do that for about two minutes just to open it up because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll up a towel and I'm going to put it between his legs so that it, it stays open, right? <clears throat> so once I elevate his legs, I've already done the exercise. I elevate his legs. It's on chair. I tell him, okay, open up your legs because I got to put the towel in between. I put the towel in between and he sits there. In the meantime, because he has swelling, I have to go to the, the, my neighbor downstairs, Rosemary, made him some um, rice bags. And rice bags are, like, super awesome because they stay cold. And 
I go get a rice bag. I go get a washcloth because it's also a, another clean washcloth. And I, I put the washcloth on his injury. Once I put the washcloth on his injury, his legs are already elevated. I put the rice bag on top of it. I make sure that he has... I'm making him drink water because he has to, <clears throat> and he's not used to it. So I make sure he has water on one side with the rest of his juice that he had for breakfast. I make sure the remote controls are next to him so he could turn on TV, and I let him sit there for about half an hour. He sits there for about half an hour, and then in the meantime, well, now i got to clean the kitchen, so I go clean the kitchen, wash the dishes, put everything away, yada, yada. <clears throat> Now I tell him, you know what? I need you to pump. I need you to do these exercises. I need you to stretch your leg. I need you to kick. I need you to, you know, lift the leg up, you know, slightly because these muscles have to get strong. Well, Sandra, I'm having spasms. Okay. Give it 30 minutes. You know, once he's there, once he's done with the 30 minutes, I bring his legs down. I take his, um, his, uh, nylon. He has to have this compression nylons on. So I take, I already took off his shoes. I take off his socks, take off the nylon. And then I go get some more coconut oil. And I now I am massaging. Okay? <sighs> and this is constantly. Luckily for me, Rosemary lives downstairs. So once I've done the massaging, put the, the, the compression nylon on. <coughs> which I read, excuse me, I read the instructions and it says that you cannot have any creases in the compression nylon because if you do, it creates, uh, it starts cutting into their skin. So you have to be extremely careful. Once I do that, I, um, I make sure he's fine. I put, I put him back up, propped up. Okay. His phone is next to him, remote controls, everything he needs, it's next to him. And I'm in the building and I'm downstairs. So, I let him watch TV for half an hour. I tell him I made it so that it's easy for him to be able to kick the chair out of the out of the way if he wants to get his foot feet down. So he gets his feet down if he wants to and I and while he has his feet down, I also have instructions that I've written from what the therapist has said where you have to do march in place once your feet are your feet are down you have to kick your leg up you have to pump you have to open up your legs close them and open them you know and i have these instructions next to him along the remote controls for the tv and the radio just in case he wants to listen to the radio and just sit there and chill and he has water and he's fine he's fine and i'm one floor below okay this is the kind of stuff. Then I go take care of Rosemary, and Rosemary is like completely different. So, because her her ability, her ability to move is is totally different. But Rome, Rosemary also has her requirements, and and she has totally different ones. This is the and if John needs me, then all he has to do is call me, and I go running up the stairs or go up the elevator. I don't know how lazy I'm gonna feel, but it's beautiful. Okay. This is the kind of stuff that the social worker needs to hear when she does an evaluation. She wants to know exactly what it is that you're doing for this patient. So for the past week, I have been calling every single day to the 888-822-9622 number. Why? Not necessarily because I want to know what hours have been allocated to him. I have left a social worker, maybe two, no, one message for the social worker and I've left the supervisor two messages. The last one I did was yesterday. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Everything that I have just told you guys, I go that on every morning, every single morning. I do it in the morning. I do it in the afternoon. And then going to sleep is another process. But it's basically all day. And I'm sitting downstairs and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm working like 14, 16 hour days. Let me multiply that. It's over 100 hours a week. No days off. OK. Except I did take Thursday off because I went to TJ and got my nails done and cigarettes and some medicine I had to bring. And I had to go see my doctor. So my son is the other provider. So he was able to, well, whether he was able to or not, 
I had him be there because I didn't want John alone. On top of that, I got to deal with the therapist. I got to deal with the um, his doctor's doctor's appointments. I have to deal with the nurse that's coming in. I have to get his uh, uh, medicines in order where there's a list. You take them at this time and not just, I know what to do, but the next person might not know what to do. I write down the time that he took the medicine and so on and so forth. And it's all these small little details that the social worker wants to hear. Not only does she want to hear it from you, the provider, but she also wants to hear it from the recipient. And the recipient needs to tell the social worker this and this and this and this and this is what needs to be done. One of the social workers or one of my recipients just took away 25 hours. And when I went back and looked at the notice of action, the 25 hours that she took away was for doctor's appointments and for bladder control. So that means that I can no longer take her to the doctors. That means that I can no longer, if she has an accident, I can't clean her up. That's her problem because I don't get paid for it. But I don't do that. If she needs me to take her to the store, to the doctors, to, to clean her up because she had an accident, can't get up, I still do it. And that's why we have to fight and advocate. So I'm in the process of fighting that and making sure she gets her 25 hours back. But it's not about the hours. It's the care that this man needs. Last night, I, I passed out. I fell asleep. And he woke me up. And he said, Sandra, it's it's eight eight 45. So from 8.45 to 9, 9, 9.30, 9.45, I didn't get home till about 10 o'clock last night, 10.30. And I was super tired. And I kind of felt like going to the bar and having a drink. But I was like, no, I'd ra I rather go home. I'd rather go home and get some rest because I got to get up the next day in the morning. And this video is to show you guys that I know what it is that it takes for you guys to take care of your family members. So please, please remember, when the social worker comes, when your patient's condition changes, this is the kind of stuff that the social, wants to hear, social worker wants to hear. And the reason that I'm waiting, if I am not satisfied with the hours that they are giving my recipient, I will fight. I will fight. And I will appeal. And the social worker, even though she's trained and, and to allocate hours, the social worker does not have the last say so. Because once you appeal these hours, there's a night you have 90 days to appeal the decision of the social worker. You have the right to go to court. When you go to court, you submit the, the paperwork that you need to submit to the judge because the judge is the one that has the final decision. And the paperwork that you submit, our doctor evaluation letters, are um, the condition of the patient. And the judge looks at that and says, okay, no, you know what, Ms. Aon, Ms. you're right. Your patient needs more hours. And these hours are so that he can get quality care. So 14, 16-hour days, I'm exhausted. On top of that, I have to take care of my kids. I didn't see my son last week for, I think I saw him for less than, and I think 10 hours is too much. My 13-year-old, and he loves me and he misses me, supposedly. But I make sure he has food here. <laughs> but I understand how hard and difficult it is for you guys to work. So I want you guys to know that you have rights. You have to give details of what it is that you're doing. And you have to express these to the social worker because she's going to make a choice and she's going to decide and like this social worker that took 25 hours away a month that's what four six hours a week that she decided to take away not only hurts her but it puts a hole in my pocket and it restricts me from providing this care which I don't restrict myself anyways so I want you guys to listen to everything that I said, write it down, express it. If the social worker does not want to listen to you, the social worker has a supervisor. If the supervisor does not want to listen to you, the supervisor has a supervisor. But advocate, the point is to advocate for your patient. Let them know everything you are doing. So I'm going to finish the rest of my coffee. Huh. 
I probably won't finish it. I'll probably take it with me. I'm almost, we're up to 900 and something, like 910 subscribers. Subscribe, comment, like, send me a heart. I don't know. I'm super tired and I got to keep going and it's Saturday and and you guys work like this around the clock. So I just wanted to recognize you guys for everything that you guys are doing and tell you that you're doing an awesome job. But I want you to do an even better job and fight for your patient, advocate for your patient, ask him to give you permission to speak for his behalf and try to better the quality of his life. Okay, because of their lives, because without you, they can't do these things. And you should be compensated and compensated well. So God bless you guys. I'm going to finish putting on my eyebrows a little bit of, just so I look decent, because I'm really tired. I think I'm losing weight, too. I'm like a little smaller. I'm like, oh, where did my tummy go? Who cares, right? <laughs> go away, go away, tummy, 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 go away. Um, <laughs> another note that I wanted to also mention while I was getting my nails done and TJ, there was this white girl that was sitting there and, uh, she couldn't speak that much Spanish. So I had to translate. Well, I found out this girl lives in Oregon. She said, whenever you want to come to Oregon, just come down here. You can stay with me. Not only that, she's also a home care provider. They have a different home care provider system out there. It's not IHSS. They also get paid $17 an hour in Oregon. So their overtime is $28.50. Um, her major is also nursing. And the reason she was in TJ was because she had a gastric sleeve. They put a ga She was a chubby girl. So they put a gastric sleeve on her. And she mentioned to me that they were going to charge her $20,000 in the States versus 5000 in TJ. So I was all like, oh, my God, girl, here's my card. Call me. Let me know who you are. You know, and, and yeah, for sure, I'll take a road trip. Let me go out to Oregon as soon as I can, you know, on my vacation. I think I can't think about when my next vacation is. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I thought that was extremely interesting and quite a coincidence, okay, because I was like, okay, okay. What does this mean, Lord? But anyways, I wanted to share that with you guys because there's home caregivers all around the world. I just thought it was quite a coincidence that I got to meet her. So I want to tell you guys to keep going, keep keep pushing, okay? It does get better. Um, let's see what happens next week, and I'll, I'll definitely keep you guys posted and tell you what... Uh, what happened with this patient, but now I've given you an idea of what it is that you guys have to do to advocate for your patient. God bless you guys. Have a great day. I hear stomps. I think my son's coming. Yep. Good morning. What's this? Oh, wow. Great. I don't know what's wrong with the internet. I couldn't get on live. So yeah, I definitely need this guy. Um, comment, like, subscribe. You didn't even say good morning. Right? I'm going to have to slap him. Um, comment, like, subscribe. Uh, let me know what it is that you think. Let me know what it is that I can help you with. And God bless you guys. Have a beautiful day. And try to get some rest. So you guys can keep going forward. Thank you for listening. Bye.